Uh, I now recognize uh, Representative Bonamici from Oregon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, minutes. Ranking Member, and thank you to all the witnesses for your expertise. I, I'm going to start by saying that years ago I was in an innovation roundtable, and a very successful tech executive said the most important thing for innovation is diversity. So you get people from different backgrounds and different perspectives. I, I just want to start by saying that. Congress and this committee wrote the Chips and Science Act to protect U.S. research, to incentivize U.S. manufacturing and to strengthen trusted partnerships, the implementation of this law, particularly the very important and science part, uh, depends on clarity, staffing, and resources. Yet this administration has drained research security, research security offices, capped in direct costs at fund compliance, and abandoned its role uh, as an interagency coordinator. I also want to note, Mr. Tilden, you talked about out-educating. I'm on the Education Committee, and I know this administration is not only trying to uh, close down the Department of Education, but policies that have passed in this Congress and that the administration is talking about will make it harder for people to access higher education in this country. That is not good for this country. I also want to align myself with the, uh, the remarks that Ranking Member Lofgren made about the contributions of immigrants. Dr. Evans, I, I discern by your accent that you're not uh, Native American <laughs> uh, to the United States of America. That's, that's right. How Thank you for exemplifying the contributions of immigrants in this country. So we, we, I, I, I want to note that this combination of things does not strengthen our national research security. It, it creates blind spots, and we can't lead in U.S. innovation and emerging technologies if this administration is undermining science agencies, if they're demeaning immigrants, if they're sabotaging federal research, if they're making higher education harder to access, attacking colleges and universities. Uh, and also, I want to note, um, uh, as of just two days ago, announcing that they want to recklessly dismantle the National Center for Atmospheric Research. So, so Dr. Kaiser, a late Tuesday night, OMB Director Vote announced that NSF would immediately begin dismantling the National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR. This center is vital for developing life-saving weather models, including atmospheric rivers like just happened in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, when did NSF learn about Director Vote's directive to dismantle NCAR? We have been reviewing all of our large facilities, and we've been doing so for several months. When did you learn about the directors? Uh, we, we have been having conversations for, for a while, and we're happy to brief you further. I know that there has been a briefing that has been requested in that regard. Well, when, when will NCAR functions be transferred elsewhere? Is that what's going to happen? And if so, to where will they go? This is a very large award. And as I said, we are reviewing all of our large facility awards. We're very conscious of the fact that there are vital research functions uh, that are occurring in weather forecasting, weather modeling, seasonal forecasting, um, wildfires, et cetera. So as we announced, we are going to be releasing a Dear Colleague letter to solicit input from the community, get input and, and, from and, and Congress. I'm going to run out of time. I appreciate that. We look forward to seeing that. But do, does NSF intend to terminate its contract for, with NCAR? We have sent an, a notification to NCAR that we were releasing this Dear Colleague letter and that we are going to be assessing the different components of NCAR. And, and Mr. Chair, I request unanimous consent to enter into the record a memo NSF sent yesterday morning announcing that it will begin closing NCAR. I, I request to enter that into the record, Mr. Chairman. And if I could be clear that we uh, have an announced the intent to restructure NCAR. Can I enter that into the record? Uh, no objection. Uh, and, and Dr. Kaiser, I understand that the Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House has been largely absent from research security coordination. So who's filling that vacuum when the White House steps back? We do coordinate quite closely with the Office of Science and Technology Policy on research security issues. Uh, and we also coordinate very closely with the interagency. OSTP does have a representative who focuses on research security who, with whom I've met frequently. And thank you. And I appreciate, Dr. Kaiser, you're, you're, you're talking about the recruitment of some of uh, our US scientists uh, by China and other places. And we've seen documented efforts uh, like that. Uh, and it's destabilizing, no doubt. Um, so how does pushing talent out of our system affect uh, America's research enterprise? I, I know Dr. Babin said something earlier about you know China's stealing everything, and it looks like they're trying to steal our, our researchers too. But if we don't have the jobs for them, and if we are not uh, uh, doing what we can to keep them here, how will that destabilize uh, grants and, and 
push our talent uh, out of our system. We do need a whole of government approach and a whole of society approach to make sure that we retain the best talent here in the United States. As you said before, we, our international researchers, international PhDs, the vast majority stay here. We need to continue that and continue that effort. Real quickly, does everybody agree with that on the panels that we need to retain the best researchers here in the United States? Without a doubt. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.